There we go. Oh. Driving home. Okay, that's really strange. Good evening, guys. Welcome. Welcome, Freddy, and welcome, Carmen. I think that you guys, well, Freddy said that he was going to be just a listener today. So, good evening, Carmen. How are you? Hi, teacher. Um, very well. And you? Fantastic. I'm really happy to hear that. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Thank you for being on time. You are the the two uh, first uh, people to come to the class, so thank you. Muchas gracias, Lisset. Vamos a esperar a los demás que creo que casi todos dicen que van a estar como parece que hoy casi todos van a estar ocupados con algo. Según lo que están diciendo acá. Así que vamos a esperar unos segunditos más. A ver qué pasa por aquí. Ahí estamos, ya vemos más. Welcome, guys. Good evening. Bienvenidos sean todos. Gracias por estar aquí otra vez. There we go. We are seven now. Awesome. Okay. Let's see if Stephanie can access now. Seems like she was having some issues. So hopefully she can answer, uh, she can access this time. Let's see. Good evening, Julio, and thank you for coming. Thank you.
Bueno, buenas noches a todos, guys. Muchas gracias por estar aquí otra vez. Espero que se encuentren bien. Espero que hayan tenido un buen día. Los que van conduciendo, con cuidado, ¿ok? No se vayan a distraer y les vaya a pasar algo. Así que mucho cuidado. So if you are driving, guys, uh, don't use your cell phone, okay? We don't want to have any accidents. Life is the most important thing. Okay, there we go. We have Stephanie back. Very good. So she was able to access. Great. Okay, guys, thank you so much for coming. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming one more time. really want to thank you for all the effort that you put in every day uh, today. It's like basically we just have this class and then we have uh, the class for tomorrow and then we finish. So you did it, guys. You did a great job. I think that you guys have learned a lot of things and I hope that you guys were, were able to learn something from this, okay? So, vamos a ver. Bueno, guys, eh, ya casi terminamos. Solamente nos queda la clase de ahora y la clase de mañana, ¿verdad? Así que felicidades a todos. Eh, ya casi terminamos. Algunos creo que ya terminaron, de hecho. Ya completaron todas sus actividades. Eh, así que si ya las completaron, creo que, de hecho, eh, Mr. Ramírez dijo que él ya había completado todo. Ya tenía su certificado. Así que probablemente, si ya terminaron, ustedes ya lo pueden descargar. Y pues, si quieren continuar con el curso, eh, con el siguiente nivel, ya podrían hacerlo, ¿verdad? Así que prácticamente ya estarían listos para pasar al siguiente nivel. Uh, good evening, teacher. Good evening, Gilbert. Eh, ¿Dónde se descarga el, el, el certificado? ¿En qué opción? Sí, vamos a ver por acá. Déjeme ver. No estoy tan familiarizado. Quiero ver. Creo que es en la plataforma, pero no. Ay, no. Sí. Ah, okay. Ya le vamos a preguntar a Mr. Ramírez, porque como yo tengo el acceso, pero para docente, ¿verdad? Ah, ok, Entonces, gracias. Me sale diferente. Ahí en el, en el menú principal, donde sale el progreso, donde dicen mis cursos, ahí uh -huh. abajo de donde sale continuar con el curso, ahí dice ver mi certificado. Ah, gracias. Pues en el menú principal ajá ok nada más que no entra, le aparece ahí el resumen de todos los cursos entonces, ah ok, aquí sería ¿verdad? ahí vas a acabar, donde dice abajito, continuar con el curso a nosotros nos aparece ahí la opción de ver certificado ah ok, no okay. Le dan. sí, a mí, a mí no me aparece esa opción <ríe> pero <ríe> bueno, para los que el, ya lo terminaron ahí les va a aparecer, así como dice Lisette You're going to get an option there that says, like, download the certificate or download diploma. I don't know exactly what it says, but it should be something like that, okay? Okay, guys, entonces, eh, ustedes están en el intermedio módulo 1. Creo que todos los módulos tienen como, perdón, todos los niveles tienen como tres módulos. Así que después creo que les tocaría módulo 2. Uh -huh. Y por, ulto, por último, módulo 3. Y luego de eso, creo que ya... Pasan como a preavanzado, creo yo. Sí. Así que, solamente para que sepan más o menos cómo está distribuido, para los que no saben. Vale, entonces, ayer, guys, nos quedamos en la parte de Will. ¿okay? Eh, ya creo que ya pasamos toda esa parte de Will, de acerca de cómo hacer oraciones afirmativas, hacer oraciones negativas y hacer preguntas. ¿okay? Creo que esa parte ya nos quedó clara. Y principalmente decíamos que Will era para los casos en que estábamos hablando de algo que no, digamos, no estaba planeado, por así decirlo, ¿ok? Entonces teníamos eh, la otra parte que era be going to, ¿ok? Be going to is like, basically, we also use be going to to talk about something that is going to happen in the future, but the difference is that Will, we haven't made a decision about that, And then will is for plans, something that you have decided already. So we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to explain you guys 
how to use be going to. Ok, that's what we're going to do. Vamos a ver. Entonces, por ahora, vamos con este tema de be going to, guys. El be going to es bien parecido también con la forma continua, la cual es cuando nosotros utilizamos un verbo con el ing. Yo antes me confundía, la verdad. Pensaba que eran lo mismo. Pero no son exactamente lo mismo, ¿ok? Porque la, la forma continua es como cuando nosotros decimos, so, okay, so I'm, I'm meeting with my mother, uh, let's say, on Friday at 5 p.m. That would be an example, ¿ok? You say, I am meeting with my mother, ¿ok? So you just use the continuous form for that, but then we have be going to. Be going to is different, ¿ok? We, uh, if we want to say it, Using be going to, then you guys will say something like, so uh, I will be going to a meeting with my mother on Friday, for example. So I will show you the structure, guys, so you can know how to use it. Vamos a ver, por acá estoy buscando ahorita la información. Aquí está, vamos a ver. Control. Bueno, bueno, por aquí les voy a compartir algo para que lo veamos de todos, una clase. Eh, yo tenía estos diálogos que quería practicar con ustedes. Eh, son acerca de Will. Antes de que pasemos a este otro tema que tenemos acá. Entonces, bueno, me gustaría que participaran ustedes. Eh, creo que no hemos tenido mucha oportunidad para que ustedes lo hagan. Entonces tenemos eh, tres diálogos, si se fijan acá. Entonces tenemos el diálogo... Uh, number two, this is after class. So basically we have different scenarios, okay? We have a scenario that is after class. Then we have number three, that is at home. And then we have a phone conversation, okay? These are uh, situations that happens uh, that happen like in everyday life. So I think that this is something that you can apply when you want to uh, talk with other people, okay? So I think that this is something that can help you guys. Okay. El propósito, yo cuando les traigo estas cosas así, es para que ustedes se familiaricen con, digamos, las expresiones que se utilizan, por lo general, en el, digamos, idioma inglés, inglés estándar. Okay. Eh, nosotros, a veces, cuando hablamos inglés, prácticamente lo que hacemos es que traducimos todo nuestro vocabulario del español al inglés. Eh, vamos a ver. ¿Qué dice Mr. Gilbert? No le aparece la opción. Ya completó. Dice, teacher, dice, usted está inscrito en el curso como asistente. Dice, este modo de tomar el curso no incluye la obtención de un certificado. Ok. Así bueno, me ¿cómo? parecía a mí al principio, cuando no, pero cuando terminé, bueno, ni he terminado, me faltan dos, dos, dos partes del examen final. Y, y me apareció como se supone que con un 80% aparece, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Y automáticamente me apareció. Uh -huh. Ok, bueno, eh, en el caso de Lisette, eh, ella tenía ese problema al inicio y cuando terminó, le apareció. Yo entiendo que Gilbert uh -huh. ya terminó, pero no le aparece todavía. Entonces, si se da un caso de ese tipo, lo que vamos a hacer es que, bueno, aquí en el grupo de WhatsApp hay gente que trabaja en administración de inglés corporativo. Entonces, podemos pedir allí a una de esas personas, que son las que tienen eh, la foto de inglés corporativo, que nos ayuden. ¿Ok? Podemos pre preguntar ahí en el grupo. Ok, gracias, teacher. Uh -huh. sí. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome, Hilbert. Yes, because I'm not able to control that. I'm sorry about that. I don't have that option. Prácticamente yo solamente puedo ver quiénes, cómo van con el progreso, puedo ver eh, ese tipo de cosas, pero no puedo, digamos, corregir si hay algún problema. Eso lo tienen que hacer ellos porque ellos manejan la plataforma. Ah, correcto. Entonces acá Lisette nos acaba de compartir. A ella sí le aparece. Dice continuar con el curso y dice felicitaciones, tu certificado está listo. Dice Bear, Sí, le aparece, eh, ya vimos. Entonces ahí, ahí está. Lamentablemente <risa> siempre hay problemas, ¿verdad? Pero... Eh, podemos preguntarle a alguien allí y nos tendrían que ayudar. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Bueno, vamos a ver entonces. Eh, como les decía, por acá tengo unas 
conversaciones, son diálogos pequeños, ¿verdad? Eh, para los que queramos practicar un poco más. Eh, sé que la parte de hablar creo que es quizás la más, quizás la más importante, ¿verdad? Mucha gente dice que nosotros aprendemos el idioma primero hablando, ¿ok? Y ya luego pues viene lo demás. Eh, como cuando somos niños. Cuando somos niños empezamos hablando, después aprendemos a escribir. Después. Entonces acá pues yo les traigo esto. Eh, son estas pequeñas conversaciones. Eh, como les digo, eh, es para que ustedes se familiaricen con las expresiones como más comunes. ¿Ok? Porque, bueno... Como les mencionaba, a veces nosotros utilizamos el inglés como si fuera el español. ¿Ok? Entonces queremos decir todo lo que diríamos en español en inglés. Pero, pues, a veces no es así, ¿verdad? Eh, para que sea más entendible, tenemos que utilizar también eh, el mismo tipo de expresiones, por lo general. ¿Ok? So, we have this uh, conversation number one, then conversation number two, and number three. So, Basically, I would like for you guys to participate. If you want to, uh, let's say, volunteer, uh, you can just raise your hand and we are going to make like couples. So you can do this, okay? You are going to like, a, it's going to be like a play role, okay? Basically, one person will be Brandon and then somebody else will be Finn, just like we did before, many, many days ago. Vamos a ver si alguien puede participar. Sé que ahora muchos no pueden porque están... Eh, ocupados, ¿verdad? Pero para los que sí puedan, o tenemos por aquí a David, Antonio. David, veamos quién más. Creo que tal vez Hilbert, porque Hilbert está por ahí, con ganas, creo yo. Ok. <ríe> bueno, entonces, <ríe> quiero que me lean esta parte, traten de interpretarlo, ¿ok? It's like, that unit is so difficult. The test is tomorrow. I think I'm in trouble. Okay, so don't worry, I will help you. Okay, try to make like sense of what they are saying. Let's try to perform, okay? That's what I want for you guys. Eh, tratemos de hacer las pausas y también respetar como los signos de puntuación, ¿verdad? Acá, that unit is so difficult. The test is tomorrow. I think I'm in trouble. Okay, then don't worry, I will help you. Okay, hay que darle como un poco de, de expresión por ahí. Vale, entonces, eh, David va a ser Brandon y luego Hilbert va a ser Finn. Ok. Uh, the unit is so, is so difficult. The test is tomorrow. I think I am in trouble. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. I will help you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. No problem. I will meet you at the library after school. Okay. So let's do it one more time, please, guys. One more time. That unit is so difficult. The test is tomorrow. I think I am in trouble. Mm -hmm. Good. Don't worry. I will help you. I will help you. Thank you so much. No problem. I will meet you at the library after school. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, guys. So yes, very good, good job. Okay, so that unit is so difficult. Okay, that's perfect, thank you. And then don't worry, I will help you. Okay, I know that that is a difficult word to pronounce, like help. So we need to practice that, okay? So I will help you. It's difficult. I know, guys. I know. So thank you so much. No problem. I will meet you at the library after school. Okay? No problem. Si se fijan, es como expresiones bien comunes, ¿verdad? Entonces, quería que practicáramos esa parte. No sé si alguien más quiere pra practicar. Podemos hacer cualquiera que ustedes quieran, ¿ok? Vamos a ver, creo que Lisette quizás quiere practicar, ¿verdad? Sí, yo quisiera participar, pero no se puede acercar un poquito más, que yo no veo mucho. Claro, claro, no hay problema, perdón. Perdón, yo aquí, este... 
Ya vale. porque yo lo tengo cerca, creo que todos lo ven. Ahí está. Ahí. Creo que tal vez se ve un poco mejor. Sí, se ve un poco mejor. Vamos a ver aquí. Ahí está. Ah, muy bien. Ok, Sería... so let's see. Ajá. Eh, uh -huh. So which one would you like to practice, Lisette? Okay, sí. Number three? Number three. This uh -huh. one? Um, uh, from me. Will you help me just the door? I'm working on something. Sure, I'll get it. Who was it? The postman. I guess what came in the mail. Ok, ahí está. Okay. No, fue bien corto, ¿verdad? Fue bien corto, pero está, está bien. Sí. Aquí, hasta aquí llegaba. Esta era bien corta. Entonces, okay. eh, muy bien, muy buen trabajo, dice. So, as you can see, guys, we have like expressions like I'm working on something, ok? So, when you are doing something, something uh -huh. so when you are, eh, let's say, working, then you say I'm working on something. That's like the way that you guys have to say it, ok? Then, uh, who was it? Okay. Who was it? Eh, en el inglés, en muchas ocasiones nos referimos así como eh, this is or that was, eh, for example, ok. Eh, no sé si han notado que en algunas ocasiones nos referimos eh, a personas utilizando este eh, expresiones como de decir eh, quién era ese o quién era esa. O cosas así, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, también podemos decir, who was it? Ok, who was it? And then, uh, the answer here is the postman. And then, and guess what came in the mail? Es como que eh, el cartero, eh, adivina qué fue lo que llegó en el correo. Ok, guess. Guess what came in the mail. Es bien común que digan ese tipo de cosas. Así como que, adivina qué. Adivina qué fue lo que pasó. So, guess what? Y así. Entonces solamente les quería mostrar eh, esta parte aquí. Muchas gracias a los que participaron. Eh, estaban un poquito cortas, pero simplemente era para mostrarles eso, ¿ok? Bueno, entonces vamos a pasar con el siguiente tema, guys. Eh, so the topic for today is be going to. ¿Ok? So basically, be going to is something that we can use so we can talk about as we can express the future. And basically, the structure is the following. We use be going to plus the infinitive of the verb. Okay, so what does that mean? Basically, it means that we are going to use be going to, and then the verb is going to be, um, excuse me, the verb is going to be in the base form. Okay, like for example, we have here uh, this sentence that says, I am going to make a sandwich for breakfast. Okay. So basically what we are going to do is that we are going to use the uh, the verb to be. So like I am, you are, he is, she is, and all those uh, pronouns that we learned before, okay? Like, for example, you can say you are going to make a sandwich for breakfast or they are going to make a sandwich for breakfast. That would be another option. So. We have the structure right here. Okay, so we have the subject, that is the first thing. And then we have the verb to be, it's going to be am, is, or are, okay? Depending on the subject. And then we have going to, that is not going to change, okay? It's going to be always like that. And then we have the verb in the, in the infinitive form, okay? Or the base form, in other words. And then we have the complement the complement, guys. Okay, so we have this one right here. Eh, vamos a borrar esto de acá. Eh, esto no, no va allí. Entonces sería eh, acá, por ejemplo, podemos decir eh, Maria is going to go um, bueno, vamos a ver, otra cosa. Learn English in Let's say three months. Okay, so Maria is going to learn English in three months. So as you can see, we have the subject first, then we have the verb to be. In this case, it is is. That is what uh, the one that belongs to this pronoun. And then we have going to, 
And then we have the verb, in this case, learn, okay? So Maria is going to learn English in three months. That will be the sentence. Uh, then we can also make questions like uh, this, okay? When are you going to work? I am going to work on Sunday, okay? Basically, we just change the order, okay? Just like we did before. So for example, in this case, R goes before the subject, okay? So we have the verb to be, then we have the pronoun, then going to and the verb. That would be an example for a question, guys. Bueno, eh, entonces, guys, ¿qué es lo que pasa con eh, be going to? Eh, dijimos de que be going to era para cosas que ya hemos planeado, ¿ok? Eh, a diferencia de will, will era para predicciones, para cosas que decidimos espontáneamente, pero be going to es, digamos, algo que ya hemos planeado con anticipación. Vamos a ver por acá un video rápido acerca de, de esta parte, lo que nos hizo falta de ver del video, para que podamos eh, aclarar cualquier duda que tengamos, ¿ok? Así que vamos a ver eso ahorita, rapidito. Que es la parte que nos hizo falta. Vamos a ver acá. Se lo voy a compartir. Give me just a second, guys. Just have to share the screen and the sound. Okay, so bear with me. Okay, there we go. Okay, we have the... Spend your next vacation. Where are you going to go? Okay, vamos a ver. Direct bus every morning at... Vamos a ver. So let's listen to the audio, guys, and then we are going to That's practice. That's the key here. Something that you decided on, we're going to use. Bueno, aquí vamos. The future. But what we're going to learn in this class is that we're going to use be going to whenever you talk about something that you've decided on. That's the key here. Something that you've decided on, we're going to use be going to. So let me give you a quick example about that. Let's say that you're going to take a vacation. You already bought the plane ticket. You already got permission from your job. So it's very unlikely that you'll change these plans. In order to express these ideas, you're going to use be going to to express that. So for example, I'm going to take vacations next week. I'm going to go to f France. That's just a quick example there. Um, you're almost sure that that event will happen. On the other hand, let's say that you're gonna, you want to take vacation, but you don't know yet. You haven't even asked your boss about it yet. And so um, you're chatting with some friends and they ask you, so what are you planning to do for your vacations? And maybe you respond, well, I'm not sure. I guess I'll go to Europe next month, but I don't know. I haven't bought the tickets, I haven't asked my boss whether I can go or not. And so in order to express that idea that you haven't decided on, then we're going to use these expressions. I guess I'll just um, stay home. Th these are the examples here in the book, but um, going back to our example about vacations, I guess I'll travel, but I'm not sure where. Uh, maybe I'll go somewhere in, in Europe. I probably will go somewhere in Europe. And that's, I mean, those are just my examples on, on how uh, you will use these expressions. But the idea here is that if you're thinking about something that you're not sure about whether that will happen or not, then you're going to use these expressions towards the right. And that's the difference that we're going to learn in this particular class. So quickly before we talk about this particular chart, what I would like to do is just present the structure on how to form sentences with be going to. So the examples on the left side of this chart. In order for us to express... Okay, guys, entonces acá tenemos otra vez la estructura, okay? El sujeto, like I, we, and I. And then we have the verb to be, which is am, is, and are, right? So I am, we are, and then going to, okay? This part is not going to change. As you can see, I am going to. We are, or we're going to. I'm not going to do anything special, okay? Then we have the verb. So just like I said before, the verb goes in the 
uh, in the base form, okay? Like in this case, we have, I'm going to relax, I'm going to go, I'm not going to do anything special, okay? So we have the verb that is in the base form. Then we have the complement, like at the beach, surfing, every day, anything special, okay? So that would be the complement for these sentences. So vamos a continuar, vamos a escuchar eh, la otra parte que hace falta. Después tenemos aquí una conversación que quiero que la escuchemos todos, ¿ok? Our thoughts and ideas about the future with Bitcoin 2. We're going to have some sort of subject. So in this case, I'm going to say, um, I am going to stay home for the weekend. ¿Ok? That's what I want to express. Um, and so... In order for us to form that idea, I'm going to have some sort of subject. This is going to follow the verb to be, and then this is going to follow going to. If you notice, going to is some kind of auxiliary to form our ideas in the future. And then this is going to follow the verb in its present form, and then whatever complements. So, like in this case, I'm going to stay home for the weekend. Right? So, this is what I've decided on doing. That's my plan. And so if you see towards the left side of the chart, we said that we're going to use be going to plus the verb for plans that you've decided on. Now, let me talk about things that I haven't decided on. So, Ok, entonces, guys, acá tenemos eh, otro ejemplo más, ¿verdad? Dice, I am going to stay home for the weekend. So basically, that means that we have already decided that that is going to happen, ¿ok? We already have the day off from work, uh, that is something that we know for sure, okay? That is the difference between will and be going to. In this case, this is something that we have the certainty that is going to happen. So I am going to stay home for the weekend, okay? That means that you know that that is going to happen, okay? Bueno, entonces, eh, vamos aquí, creo yo, vamos a pasar a la siguiente parte. No sé si tenemos alguna pregunta acerca de esto. Si se fijan acá, dice, what are you going to do? Okay, that is the way that we make sentences. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, that's, that's the way that we ask questions. Would be going to, okay? So, are you going to, let's say, relax at the beach? And then you, the answer is going to be, yes, I am or no, I'm not. Or if you want to ask an information question like this, then what are you going to do? Then uh, you can say, I'm going to relax at the beach, okay? Or we are going to go surfing every day, or I'm not going to do anything special, okay? So in this case, we have an information question, but you can also make just no questions with that. Vamos a ver, por ejemplo, podemos decir, Eh, como les estaba mencionando, podemos decir uh, Are you going to go on vacation next month, for example? You can say that. And then, uh, in this case, we have a yes, no questions, guys. So you can say, yes, I am. Or you can say, no, I'm not. Okay, so those would be the two options in this case, because this is a yes, no question. But here we have an information question. So that would be uh, like with a WH word. Okay, you can also ask, when are you going to go on vacation? And then the answer can be, um, I am going to go on vacation. Uh, let's say in three months. Okay, that will be another example. So we have different options. Uh, more, we have more options other than this, okay? These are not the only options that we have. We can ask a lot of questions with this. Okay, estamos, estamos claros aquí en esta parte. Eh, igual, ¿verdad? Eh, si queremos decir una oración negativa también, Aquí está, es I'm not going to do anything special, okay? So, um, oh, you can say, for example, I'm not going to go on vacation 
this year, for example, okay? That would be another option too. You can also make negative sentences. You just have to add not between uh, the verb to be and going to, okay? So I'm not going to go on vacation, for example. Okay, any questions, guys, so far? Vamos a ver, perdón, vamos a ver. Creo que aquí Freddy quería preguntar algo. Sí, Freddy. Yes, teacher. Um, uh, when the man who is giving the class in the, in the video, guy, in the video, when he were typing, going to, he say gonna. Is it okay to say in gonna? Mm -hmm. Yep, yes, that would, be, that would be fine. I think that when they say it like really fast, Sometimes it sounds like that. It sounds like I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you, or things like that. So yeah, that would be that would be good. That would be fine. Okay. No problem. You can you can say that. Usually that would be considered like not really formal. Let's say that would be a little bit informal, but you can do it anyway. It just depends. Okay. Because I have been talking with people from USA and, and I listen that they always, they too say gonna. Mm -hmm. Yep, so yeah, they, they usually do it. Just like I mentioned before, it depends on, let's say um, the situation. So basically you're talking to a friend or to somebody like uh, somebody like that, then you can say, I'm gonna show you or I'm gonna do it. So yeah, that would be fine. That would be fine too. Así que muy muy bien, Freddy tiene razón, también lo podemos hacer así. De hecho, pues en inglés la gente habla bien rápido, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, por eso es que se dan ese tipo de de como contracciones o ese tipo de expresiones como más eh, así con otro sonido diferente, ¿verdad? Pero está bien, lo pueden decir I'm going to do that or I'm gonna do it. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do that. That would be fine too. Vamos a ver, se lo voy a pasar por acá el, el texto para los que, bueno, tal vez tengan duda con eso. También pueden decir como que I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Se lo voy a pasar aquí por el chat. I'm gonna talk to my mother, for example. Okay. Thank you, teacher, for the explanation. I, I... I was having problems with my yeah. internet connection. That's okay. That's okay. You're fine, Freddy. Thank you. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> not, not a problem. Okay, so. I'm so sorry. It's okay. You're fine. Okay, so let's uh, continue, guys. I Okay, I shared the, like, an example with you. So I'm going to talk to my mother, for example. You can say that. So like I mentioned before, if you're talking to a friend or let's say in uh to a relative or something like that then you can say that but if it is something like formal something like that then you probably want to use going to so i'm going to go that sounds like more formal okay so vamos a continuar guys eh, quiero ver qué más les quería mostrar acá eh, esta parte explica acerca de will lo cual ya lo vimos Entonces vamos a, vamos a ver el, el inicio del video, el cual hay una conversación entre dos personas en la cual utilizan will y be going to. Okay, so nuestro trabajo, guys, es identificar esas expresiones. Okay, quiero que ustedes puedan identificar dónde utilizamos uh, go, be going to y las expresiones que utilizan will. Y para que ustedes me las digan. Okay, así que lo vamos a escuchar un par de veces y por favor tomen notas. Porque yo también voy a tomar notas aquí. Vamos a ver, por acá. Vamos a ver. For example. Ok, aquí vamos, guys. I'm going to go to France for my next vacation. I'm not sure what place I'll visit yet, but I think I'll visit the Eiffel Tower. Before I explain the grammar involved in this lesson, I would like to play an audio program to illustrate how this topic is used. Your task is to listen carefully and take notes as I'll ask a few questions about this listening activity at the end. I'm 
I'm so excited. We have two weeks off. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. I guess I'll just stay home. Maybe I'll hang out with my friends and watch some movies. What about you? Any plans? Yeah, I'm going to relax at the beach with my cousin. We're going to go surfing every day. And my cousin likes to fish, so maybe we'll go fishing one day. Sounds like fun. Say, why don't you come with us? Do you mean it? I'd love to. I'll bring my surfboard. That's great. The more the merrier. By the way, where are we going to stay? Oh, we can stay in my aunt and uncle's beach house. They have plenty of room, and I'm sure they'll be happy to have guests. I'll call in tonight to let them know what time we're going to arrive. I guess we'll leave pretty early. There's a direct bus every morning at 5 a.m. That's fine with me. I think I'll be too excited to sleep. <laughs> Now let okay. me present vamos, the vamos a escucharlo otra vez, guys. Porque es bastante rápido, ¿verdad? Hablan bastante rápido, así que le vamos a dar para atrás. Un poquito. Quiero que intenten enfocarse en los detalles, ¿ok? Sé que dicen bastantes cosas en un ratito. Así que vamos a escucharlo otra vez. To illustrate how this topic is used is to listen carefully and take notes as I'll ask a few questions about this listening activity at the end. I'm so excited. We have two weeks off. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. I guess I'll just stay home. Maybe I'll hang out with my friends and watch some movies. What about you? Any plans? Yeah, I'm going to relax at the beach with my cousin. We're going to go surfing every day. And my cousin likes to fish, so maybe we'll go fishing one day. Sounds like fun. Say, why don't you come with us? Do you mean it? I'd love to. I'll bring my surfboard. That's great. The more the merrier. By the way, where are we going to stay? Oh, we can stay in my aunt and uncle's beach house. They have plenty of room, and I'm sure they'll be happy to have guests. I'll call in tonight to let them know what time we're going to arrive. I guess we'll leave pretty early. There's a direct bus every morning at 5 a.m. That's fine with me. I think I'll be too excited to sleep. Now let me present this. Okay, guys. Eh, bueno, ¿cómo, ¿cómo estamos? ¿Lograron anotar algo? O todo. Bueno, yo no lo logré, no logré anotar todo, la verdad. No les voy a mentir. Así que no sé, no sé ustedes cómo están, si quieren que lo oigamos otra vez. One more time. Yo, yo no lo logré captar todo. Sí tengo bastante parte de, de la conversación, pero no toda. Bueno, vamos a escucharlo una vez más, ¿ok? Solamente para salir de dudas, ¿ok? Aquí vamos. Listen carefully and take notes as I'll ask a few questions about this listening activity at the end. I'm so excited. We have two weeks off. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. I guess I'll just stay home. Maybe I'll hang out with my friends and watch some movies. What about you? Any plans? Yeah, I'm going to relax at the beach with my cousin. We're going to go surfing every day. And my cousin likes to fish, so maybe we'll go fishing one day. Sounds like fun. Say, why don't you come with us? Do you mean it? I'd love to. I'll bring my surfboard. That's great. The more the merrier. By the way, where are we going to stay? Oh, we can stay in my aunt and uncle's beach house. They have plenty of room, and I'm sure they'll be happy to have guests. I'll call in tonight to let them know what time we're going to arrive. I guess we'll leave pretty early. There's a direct bus every morning at 5 a.m. That's fine with me. I think I'll be too excited to sleep. Now let me... Bueno, bueno, guys, ahí estamos. Entonces, vamos a ver. Eh, vamos a empezar. ¿Qué me pueden decir del principio? ¿Qué es lo que dicen al inicio? Vamos a ver. ¿Qué es lo que dice? Vaya. Vamos a ver, Freddy. First of all, she is so excited because... 
they have two days off and uh -huh. she asked for the for, for her her friend and what are you going to go and i'm not sure is the is the answer i guess i'll stay home and another another okay so very good thank you so much freddy so freddy says that first of all she's uh, really excited it's really excited because she they are going to have two days off. So is it two days or two weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks, two weeks. right? That yes. is correct. Two weeks. There we go. So two weeks, not two days. Excited. That's what she said. That that's what she said, right? She said, I'm really excited. We're going to have we have two weeks off, she said. Uh, we have two weeks off. Sorry, here. We have two weeks off, she said. And then, uh, just like Freddie said, she asked her friend, what are you going to do? Then she asked something like that. What are you going to do? So then uh, she answered to that. And she said a couple of things. So let's see, what did you guys, uh, what did she say? What is she going to do? What did she say? She said a couple of things at, at first. She said like, um, I don't know, or I'll guess I just stay home. Maybe I will hang out with some friends. She said something like that, right? Do you remember? Vamos a ver, vamos a escucharlo. Parece que no, no lo lograron escuchar, ¿verdad? ¿Qué pasó? She said, I'm not sure. Uh -huh. Vamos a ver, vamos a ver. This structure carefully and take notes as I'll ask. I'm so excited. We have two weeks off. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. I guess I'll just stay home. Okay, so she says, I'm not sure. I'll guess. I'll guess, okay? So remember, guys, that we have the contractions. So she says, I'm not sure. I'll guess. Okay? I'm not sure. I'll, uh, vamos a ver, creo que dijo, I guess, bueno, I guess, I'll just stay home, ¿ok? ¿Se acuerdan de las expresiones que estuvimos viendo, verdad? Que decíamos que I guess, o maybe, probably, so this, this is one of them, ¿ok? So I'm not sure, I guess, I'll just stay home. She said something like that. Vamos a ver aquí, un poquito atrás to do i'm not sure i guess i'll just stay home maybe i'll hang out with my friends and watch some movies what about you any plan okay and then she says what is the next thing that she said ¿Qué dijo después? Vamos a ver. ¿Qué dice aparte de tal vez solamente me quede en casa y luego dice tal vez vamos a ver dice tal vez eh, pase el tiempo con algunos amigos. Algo así. ¿Cómo lo dirían ustedes? ¿Qué es lo que dijo ella? A ver. ¿Cómo sería? ¿Cómo dirían ustedes eh, que les gusta pasar tiempo con sus amigos? Hay, hay varias opciones, ¿verdad? Pero, ¿cómo lo dijo ella acá? Vamos a ver, vamos a ponerlo otra vez. Creo que no lo escucharon, ¿verdad? I'll hang out with my friends and watch some movies to do. I'm not sure. I guess I'll just stay home. Maybe I'll hang out with my friends and watch some movies. Okay, so maybe I'll hang out with my friends. Okay. Watch a movie. Watch a movie. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Hilbert. Very good. So she says, maybe I'll hang out with some friends, okay? And watch a movie. So then we have this uh, expression right here, okay? Hang out, okay? I think that you probably heard the expression before, okay? Hang out, to hang out with somebody, okay? Tenemos esta expresión acá que es como para decir eh, pasar el tiempo, con, la, con alguien o solo solamente eso, ¿verdad? Como pasar el tiempo con alguien. 
Entonces, pasar el tiempo con algunos amigos y ver una película. ¿okay? Recuerden que ver una película se dice de esta forma. Watch a movie. So, watch TV, watch a movie, things like that. ¿okay? So, vamos a continuar. What about you? Any plans? Yeah, I'm going to relax at the beach with my cousin. We're going to go surfing every day. And my cousin likes to fish, so maybe we'll go fishing one day. Sound. Bye, okay. Después, ¿qué es lo que dice? Vamos a ver. Ayúdenme, guys. I need your help, guys. Please. ¿Qué es lo que dice después? Vamos a ver. Creo que le pregunta si tiene algún plan, ¿verdad? ¿Estamos de acuerdo? Yes, she said, what about you? Mm -hmm. Do you have plans or something mm -hmm. like that? Okay, good. Very good, Freddy. That is correct. So, what about you? Do you have any plans? And then uh, she, she answers to that question, right? So, what did she say, guys? What did she say? Vamos a ver, alguien más? Parece que hoy todos están ocupados, quizás. Okay, so then uh, she says that they, she is going to relax at the beach. Yes. Her cousin. Okay. Vaya, ¿qué es lo que dice? Dice, eh, vamos a, o voy a relajarme en la playa con mi primo, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo, cómo sería entonces? Sounds like fun. I'm going to relax. Vamos a ver aquí, perdón. Sí, Freddy. No, no, teacher, go ahead. No, sorry, I'm sorry about that. Ok, vamos a ver. Yeah, I'm going to relax at the beach with my cousin. We're going to go surfing every day. And my cousin likes to fish, so maybe we'll go fishing one day. Sounds like fun. Say, what? Ok, entonces dice eh, que se van a relajar en la playa con el primo y que tal vez, y que ellos van a ir a surfear todos los días. Ok, y dice que tal vez, porque el primo le gusta pescar. Ok, entonces tal vez vayan a pescar un día. ¿Cómo diríamos eso en inglés? Vamos a ver. Using will, maybe we'll we'll go fishing one day. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Freddy. That is correct. That's the last part that she said. So uh, she said something like, my cousin, he loves to fish. So maybe we'll go fishing one day. That's what she said. So that's perfect. And then uh, the, the, before that, she said something like, I'm going to relax at the beach with my cousin. And we are going to go surfing every day. Okay, so they already planned that. That is a plan that they have. So that's the reason why they are using going to. Okay, and then maybe we will go fishing. That's something that we haven't decided yet. So that's the reason why we use will. Okay, bueno, guys, eh, vamos a ver. Vamos a pasar a la siguiente parte. Eh, luego dice también, eh, ¿por qué no vienes con nosotros? So, ¿cómo diríamos eso? ¿Por qué no vienes conmigo? ¿Por qué no vienes con nosotros? So, she said something like, why don't you come with us? Why don't you come with us? Okay, let me write it down for you. Se lo voy a anotar por aquí. So, she said, why... Don't you come with us, okay? So basically, when we say something like this, basically it's like an invitation, guys. Most of the times we use negative questions so we can invite somebody to do something like, uh, why don't we go to the party? Why don't we go to the beach? Why don't we go together? Or why don't you come with us? Like in this case, okay? So for example, here she's asking, eh, ¿Por qué no vienes con nosotros? Ella dice, well, I, I would love to. 
esta es otra parte. Eh, nosotros normalmente para aceptar una invitación decimos, eh, bueno, si queremos ir, eh, hay dos opciones, ¿verdad? Si queremos y la otra es si no queremos o no podemos, por ejemplo. Entonces, si queremos, nosotros diríamos por lo general, I would love to, or that would be great, something like that, okay? But if you want to decline the invitation, then you can say something like, um, I'm sorry, I can, I have to do something else, okay? I'm sorry, uh, I can, I have to go to work, for example. Okay, esta sería una forma de, digamos, rechazar una invitación, ¿verdad? Solamente un ejemplo. Pero si ustedes no pueden o no quieren, pues pueden decir algo como esto. So, let's say that somebody wants to invite you to do something. Like, for example, somebody tells you, hey, why, don't we, uh, why don't we go to the, to the movies? Then you can say, I'm sorry, I can, I have to work. Or I have to uh, do the homework. For example, I have to do the homework. The homework or whatever that it is that you have that you guys have to do. Okay? So, tenemos tanto para aceptar la invitación como para rechazarla, ¿verdad? Acá en este caso ella que eh, sí está interesada, entonces acepta la invitación y dice, "I would love to." Okay? I would love to do that. Por allí usan una, una expresión bien rara, la verdad, que es the more, the merrier. Ok, ahí dicen eso, ya van a ver, se lo voy a poner por acá. Dice the more, the merrier. Why don't you come with us? Do you mean it? I'd love to. I'll bring my surfboard. That's great. The more, the merrier. Ok, escucharon por ahí. Entonces, eso significa que... Mientras más, mejor. En una actividad, ¿ok? Es como una expresión para... Mientras más seamos en la fiesta, mejor. Más divertido. Do you mean it? I'd love to. I'll bring my surfboard. That's great. The more the merrier. By the way, where are we going to stay? Oh, we can stay in my aunt and uncle's beach house. They have plenty of room, and I'm sure they'll be happy to have guests. I'll call in tonight to let them know what time we're going to arrive. I guess we'll leave pretty early. Ok. Entonces, eh, ¿dónde dicen que se van a quedar? Vamos a ver, ¿qué se le dice? Ella le pregunta, ¿verdad? ¿De dónde nos vamos a quedar prácticamente? ¿Dónde se van a quedar? So basically, they say something like, we can stay... Ah, oh, perdón, Fre Freddy, perdón, continúe. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, she said we are going to stay at the aunt and uncle beach house. Awesome. Okay, that is correct. That's what she said. So we can stay at my aunt and uncle beach house. Okay. So, uh, esa es otra expresión, digámoslo así. Eh, digamos que ustedes quieren decir que se van a quedar en la casa de alguien. Eh, pueden decirlo de esa forma. Como uh, I'm going to stay at my mother's house, for example. Or you can say I'm going to stay at my, let's say, uh, girlfriend house, for example. Eh, así que sería como una expresión que nosotros utilizamos para decir dónde eh, vamos, pensamos quedarnos. O sea, es como que vamos a estar allí. ¿okay? Entonces podemos decirlo de esa forma. Eh, bueno, eh, ¿qué más? Veamos. Eh, bueno. Bueno, luego la otra parte era, eh, aparte de eso, vamos a darle play por acá. There's a direct bus every morning. Let them know what time we're going to arrive. I guess plenty of room, and I'm sure they'll be happy to have guests. I'll call in tonight to let them know what time we're going to arrive. I guess we'll leave pretty early. There's a direct bus every morning at 5 a.m. That's fine with me. I think I'll be too excited to sleep. Ok, bueno, luego están eh, hablando acerca de que tal vez van a tener que irse temprano porque hay un bus directo todas las mañanas a las 5 de la mañana. Y dice ella, bueno, creo que voy a estar demasiado emocionada para dormir. So, I guess, I guess I'll be too excited to sleep. Ok, so that's what she said at the end. Eh, bueno, 
Entonces, esta parte, guys, se las quería mostrar porque es una práctica de nuestro listening. Si se fijan, pues se hablan bien rápido, ¿verdad? Eh, a veces así es y a veces no logramos entenderlo. Entonces, es bueno practicar esa parte del listening. Y también, pues, eh, traemos acá algunas expresiones que les pueden servir a ustedes. Así que, no sé si tienen alguna pregunta hasta ahora, guys. Any questions? No questions for today? No questions, teacher. No questions. All right. So, well, guys, if you don't have any questions, um, just want to thank you one more time for being here. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Hope you guys have a great evening. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you, teacher. You too. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. You're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye. See Bye, you. Teacher. Good night, guys.